Hello and welcome. Please read the problem, pause it, and try it on your own. You can do it. Okay, let's start by reading it together. It says, uh, simplify the expression below. So here's our expression, and I see we have 1 over 4 to the negative second. So if that's a little bit overwhelming to you, uh, it's a little scary to see that negative exponent in there, you might start with something that's a little bit more friendly. Don't be afraid to start with something you know. You don't have to know the entire path of your solution at once. Start somewhere. Get things going. So I know that 4 squared is 16, or 1 times 4 times 4. And I put that 1 in the front. It's not uh, computationally necessary, but allows us to really play with some patterns here. That's 16. So I'm going to kind of whittle my way down to 4 to the negative second. 4 to the first is one group of 4, or 4. I notice we're dividing by 4, and that makes sense. We have 1 less 4 to multiply. So the product is 4 times less than 16. 4 to the 0 is just 1. We divide by 4 over and over again, and 4 to the 0 is 1. Also, you can think, oh, well, this 0 refers to the number of 4s that we're multiplying 1 by, and there are no 4s, but 1 still standing in front. Now we, we work our way towards 4 to the negative 1, it could be a negative number, except that would break a lot of other things in mathematics. So we use division. It's one division of 4. And 4 to the negative second is two divisions of 4. And now we're almost done with the problem. Because what's happening here is that if we divide these results by 4 each time, 16, 4, 1, 4 to the negative first is a fourth, and then 4 to the negative second, a fourth cut in 4 is sixteenths, right? So this pattern right, um, goes a little bit further. One thing we can really think about is that these numbers, 4 and 1 fourth, are reciprocals. And then these numbers, 16 and 1 16th, are also reciprocals. Now reciprocals, um, I guess one, we'll say two ways of thinking about reciprocals, is that they are um, flipped versions of each other. That's one way to think about it. I'll explain that in a second. The other more sophisticated way is that their product is always 1. That's how you know you have reciprocals. If the product equals 1, then you're dealing with reciprocals. So let's look at that. What is 16 times 1 16th? Well, that's 1. What's 4 groups of fourth? fourths? <laughs> that's also 1. So these are reciprocals. The flip down, uh, flipped upside down version uh, definition uh, is referring to the fact that 16 could be thought of as 16 over 1. If you flip those two numbers around, you get 1 over 16. They're upside down from each other. And then 4 and 1 fourth, 4 could be thought of as one, 4 over 1. So then we have 1 over 4, and those are reciprocals. What does all this mean? Well, this means if you were saying, Sean, what's 4 to the negative second? I would think, well, 4 to the second, 16, and then I would flip it around to get 4 to the negative second. Here, though, we have something a little bit more interesting. We have 1 over, right, over 4 to the negative second. So what do we do here? Let me just pick the right color so you can see this. Okay, 1, well, that's not really a great color, is it? Sorry about that. 1 over 4 to the negative second. That means 1 over 1 16th. Right? We just said that 4 to the negative second is 1 over 16. Now, 1 over 1 16th is 1 divided by a 16th. Now, this means two things to most students. It might mean, oh, I'm dividing by a fraction, so I multiply by the reciprocal here. And I get my answer, which is 16, or here, C, 16 over 1. But you can also interpret it in, uh, in the context, because this is saying how many 1 16ths fit into one whole. And you can think of it that way, you'll still get an answer of 16, right? 16 1 16ths make up a whole. And that's why, essentially, we're multiplying here. Anyway, sorry, so I rambled a little bit. But here it's just 16 over 1, right? Or you can think of it as equaling 4 squared, right? And that's really cool because if 4 the negative second, uh, 1 over 4 the negative second is 4 squared, right? You also know 1 over 4 squared, it's called this problem, but you could talk about this. The reverse is true, right? If 1 over 4 the negative second is 4 squared, you can also think, well, if I have 1 over 4 to the second, that has to equal 4 to the negative second. Because what you're always going to get here, same bases, opposite exponents. This is always going to work. There's a nice connection here. All right. Thanks.